OSHA representatives aren't going to be watching this, right? <laughs> Forty. The work order said thirty. So we're gonna do thirty and see what happens. I made this. What you got, Pete? What do I got? My girl Crystal just sent me a uh, a text of our numbers this week. And uh, she was five thousand, almost six thousand dollars over projections for this week. I don't know about you, but this is my town. This ain't all counties now. Last year, we followed two competitors ten minutes apart from each other. This year, we filmed what happened next. All yours. When I'm on the phone with you, I'm all yours. You don't have to worry about anyone taking me off the phone from you. Mm -hmm. She's now. And then, um, once Dave is done, I'm assuming that walkthrough shouldn't take more than an hour or two. And then what's it, a two hour ride from there back to Selective? And then, so you should be back to him by lunchtime. Yeah, and then everyone just stays there until it's done and hopefully we can finish it that day now who's going to train him how to drive a fucking stick I thought your whip was going to do it we don't have a stick yeah i got freaking the shitload of them outside but i don't have the patience to do it i'd end up fucking slapping no problem teaching if i didn't have no, no, no. It could be done any day. It doesn't matter when. He just wants to learn. And I'm sure as hell not training him on my Camaro. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about, uh, about this customer then. Uh, I will. Oh, wait a minute. Dave, come here. I just got a bid through New York State for all the Albany County and Albany um, businesses, not businesses, government buildings. Too far for us to go? Probably the, the, the Capitol building and all that up in Albany. It's two hours, two hours from my house. So it's probably two and a half hours from here. Yeah. I don't know whether to answer it or not. So. Um, Albany, if they're the Capitol buildings, they're big. Yeah. You can be gay. You probably need a... Uh, Josh. If he wants to go up there, yeah. Well, he's going to freaking Monticello. <laughs> Is he? Yeah. He's going to Monticello for me. He's doing I mean, a that'd be a big enough job. He's doing him. a 10-story building up there for me. So why not send him to this? I just prefer him to another one down in Tom's River, too. Well, is he going to keep giving his jing? I'm sure he will. I'm going to have to keep tallies on this. All right, so I'll, I'll look into this tomorrow and get it out to you, and then we'll... Um, We'll see what we're gonna do. Oh, the big wooden ones, huh? Oh yeah, how thin they are. No, they look good, Mike. 
I don't see any spot on the outside anyway. How are you? Not too bad. I'm Ron. I'm the assistant operations manager, by the way. Oh, <laughs> oh you got it. <laughs> but yeah, they look good, Mike. I don't think you got it. Two hours on them. I don't believe how much you have to take down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's common. You know, screens, grates, move plants, furniture. Yep. Very good. Where's Scott? Scott is up, down that hall to the right, or the left. Down. Up in the bedroom. Down that way? Yes, sir. Doing good? What's up? How's everything going? I'm doing good. Okay. Good. Just figured I'd set up here on the tile and then I could Yeah, yeah, no, trips. that's good. Um, where's that one pillow that you couldn't get out? I got it. Oh, you got so it? So the good. heat must have expanded. Yeah, yeah. It came out by hand. Good, good. So we didn't have to use any tool or anything. Perfect. So I'm just set up here. I'm going to do the, uh, the interior pieces and then go start putting them back in. Um, yeah, good job. Sounds right. good. So do you do the shower screens as well? So um, we do help. offer that service. Um, mm -hmm. Some people, you know, do uh, ask us to do that as well as mirrors and other uh, glass items. Mm -hmm. But um, this particular customer um, just has us doing windows. Cool. You have to pop the windows out as well. These are the Pella style windows, yeah. Yeah, this is. No? In the UK. No, these are the same windows that we have at the shop. Yeah. Um, yeah, you just gotta unclip them, pull them out, clean them. I mean, we charge for it. They're different, you know, it's a different type of window. Yeah. Um, it's more work involved. Yeah, yeah, a lot more. Cleaning four surfaces instead of two, so. And it's um, it's a process, even when you pull it out to clean it, you have to read, you have to push the clips in so the end flat surface. Yeah, it's a big... And then it bounces along, and so you got to take your time. You can't really, you can't fan as fast as you want on the clip side, or it'll bounce your squeegee off the surface and create streaks. So yeah. it is a tedious process. Yeah, yeah. All right. Excuse me, Ron. You got it? do is I've already freed the clips. I'm going to sit it in the channel and it pops back in and then put the tab in. Job done. Job done. And you do the same for that and then uh, there it is. And make sure they sit right. So, pizza, what are you cooking today? Ah, top secret chicken. My uh, homemade chicken in a cream sauce. Is it as good as your meatballs? My meatballs are freaking awesome. <laughs> cooking is a big part of my life. You do most of the cooking in the house, don't I you? I do the majority of it, correct. Because I like cooking. And anything to help my wife out. She does a lot for me throughout the day, so we try to uh, cook as I cook as much as I can. Plus, it's relaxing. After a long day of work, I feel like uh, Gordon Ramsay cooking. How do you actually relax, Pete? You know, you you got a busy office. You, you must be always thinking about work. I do. It must I be always about, in your head. I think about work 24 hours a day, but the quality time I spend here with the family is what I do. And I like cooking. I do a lot of woodworking. Uh, do that downstairs. Have a nice big woodworking shop down there. But the cooking is the big part. That's what I like doing. That. My wife is home right now from a long day of work. And every good chef has to have a uh, glass of wine. Nice. <laughs> nice. Hi, Tammy. I was expecting that. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Excellent. You look like you come out of a Gucci magazine or something. <laughs> 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 you know what are you making for dinner tonight? I 
I am making chicken and cream sauce. My wife is very seriously my backbone. She is the one that had uh, all the faith in me. She believed in me. Uh, this was a joint venture. She has just as much at stake on this as I do. Uh, she's my bookkeeper. She comes in, uh, she has a full-time job running an insurance agency. And every weekend she comes in and spends several hours a weekend in my office doing all my bookkeeping. So my wife is, was excited and scared like we all were. But it's uh, tally-ho and off we go now. Tally-ho. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. My, uh, my world-class signature dish. And I would have made risotto because that is Gordon Ramsay's signature dish. But the friggin' Brit behind the camera doesn't like risotto. So I'm going to have to tell Gordon himself that you have to be exiled from the country. And I'm sure when you get back between your cock rings and everything else, you're going to be exiled anyway, so I'm sure we're not going to worry about it. And then the top secret recipe, the top secret ingredient to any of my dishes is right here. And if you come in and promise not to tell anyone, this is fresh garlic. And in the Italian culture, garlic is put into everything. And garlic is the man's secret recipe because the garlic makes the old men's gauche stand straight up. Is that true? Fuck yeah, man. That's my wife. She, uh, <laughs> she wishes I didn't put garlic in anything. Do the big manuals? The big manuals? My god, there were like loads of them. I don't even have it all printed. I did like a lot over uh, just this past winter because it takes forever just to write it all because uh, the last manager that was here, he was supposed to be writing all the management stuff and he never did. So I wrote pretty much all that this year. But yeah, we we have everything written out as from like changing a razor blade to talking to the customers to doing window counts to selling on the phone everything. So when we talk about automation and about doing um, systems within our company in all county, Chris Lamardini set up an, an absolutely fantastic systems. We have systems here for everything. We even have systems here on how to use a lavatory and how to clean your ass because it's very important that while they're sitting there taking calls, they don't have an itchy butt. So this is one of our sales room manuals, and this is what our salespeople use for incoming and outbound calls. So we have it broken down into residential window cleaning. We have all the windows lined out, how much they cost, the descriptions of them, and it just, with sales reps cleaning process through the true divides. So we have it broken down to explain to the customer how every single window we do is going to be cleaned, including company policies that we stain. So over this winter, Crystal and I took these systems books and didn't rewrite them, but we tweaked them and we added a lot of stuff that should have been in there uh, so these things cover everything, house washing, gutter cleaning, we have it all with pictures so when the sales rep looks at a house, they know exactly what a window looks like, what a palladium looks like, what a double hung looks like, screens. So we have it broken down so that as a salesperson is going over a quote with a person on the phone, they can just go right through this manual and it lists everything, including window counts and how removable grids, true divides, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just, there's just, it's countless. We have every possible scenario there could be listed in this book so that our salespeople know exactly how to quote and to uh, estimate a house over the phone. <clears throat> you say you have systems for everything? Correct. Why? Because without a system, people would just be running rampant throughout the, the office. We have systems for everything, cleaning trucks, 
how to start a truck, how to approach a customer's home, how to talk to customers, how to carry ladders. We have extensive safety programs that our guys have to go through and ladder carrying, handling ladders, strapping ladders onto trucks. And that's just under ladders, pressure washers, window cleaning equipment, everything. And that way the entire unit as a whole and the company as a whole runs as a machine you're instead big, of people just running rampant. You're a big believer of doubling up. Doubling up? Yeah, having two people. Know Correct. Job. Two people in a truck. Exactly. Or two people knowing a job throughout the company. I'm sorry? Or two people knowing a job throughout the company. Correct. Yeah. So salespeople, we always have two. Operations managers, we have two. Techs, we have a plethora of those. Supervisors, we have 14 supervisors. So everybody has a job and everybody knows what they're supposed to do. Finance, there's two. We have Liz and we have my wife. Me, well, I'm the only one there isn't two of because I'm the brains to the whole organization and I can't share. The brains? The brains. The brains? The brains, man. <laughs> so we have all sorts of disclaimers that we read, especially when it comes to power washing. It's broken down into gutter cleaning. It's broken down into flat surface cleaning with scripting, scripting under each part of it. How important is scripting? It's very important because there's, we've come across just about every scenario and a question that could be asked of our salespeople. And if they don't know the answer, all they have to do, let's just say it's under flat surface cleaning. They flip to the flat surface cleaning. They'll tell the customer, could you just please hold for one minute? And they'll go right in, they'll find the question and then off they go. And then we have pictures of the different flat surface cleaning, how to measure. So this makes you super efficient. Right? Correct, very efficient. Fine oil machine, Lee. And what we do is how we, what we do is when they're all done doing this and they can somewhat measure what's out here, if it's something they can't do, say a, a very unique home, a big home, then we send either Ron or Dave out to do the physical estimate of it. The techs or the supervisors, the pressure washing crews, while they are out pressure washing, they will actually do the measurements for us of flat surface, like sidewalks, patios, and any specialty type cleanings. So they'll measure that, and what they'll do is they'll call us back or the sales room with the price. We automatically put it onto smart service. So if we go on to smart service, we go under the scheduling, and let's just say there's a pressure washing right here, Crystal or Derek will go on to this. They'll add it to their work order, and then in turn through um, iFleet, which is part of this program, we directly send a new work order directly back to them via their iPhone. And at that point, the customer will see the new copy of the work order. We will write out a work order, we charge them, they'll either pay by credit card or by check. And then at that point, um, they will sign it on the screen of the iPhone and the tech will email it directly to them so they have it instantly in a rebox and we get paid. So efficiency. And that's really how this whole thing is broken down. We have it broken in in a roof cleaning. Here's all the questioning for roof cleaning. Uh, we have the residential sales managers. We have it for sales manager scripting with different types of questions. So every team job, so there's a lot of bigger jobs that we might have to send two or three or four trucks to. For example, on the 16, we have one job on the 16, right now. That's one of our largest commercial jobs that we have to do. And we will be sending that day all eight trucks. And there'll be two men per truck just to do that one job and get it finished that day. So, how much uh, storefronts you got to do today? Uh, there are three routes going out. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how much, uh, how many uh, totals get done, but there are three fairly, uh, pretty large routes, so the guys will be out most of the day, probably. Could. 
five or six o'clock tonight. So, kind of long day. Long. Yeah, longer day, yeah. <laughs> Chad and Mike go estimate as well? No, it was mine. They get done once a week, so oh. kind of relative to what they pay, you know. That's looked at 21 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> they were, I was charging them like 30 something. Yeah. Well, and they get done once a week. And he goes, oh, can you give me a break? Can you lower the price if I do it once a week? So, yeah. Okay. We were saying he has a cloud based program too, and they can use their smartphones and just sign and pay through that. Reschedule jobs that's, and stuff. That's what we're get. That's what we're getting to. Like we're gonna, hopefully, like hopefully we can start using phones. Like you know, if we have to get, you know, cheap, you know, iPhones or something. Because all all your route work will be scheduled like once a week or once right. every two weeks. Sometimes once a month maybe, mm -hmm. but it's regular all of the time. Right. So if your operative, your technician is there doing the job, then they can get their phone out and press complete. It automatically updates your system and reschedules it. Yeah, that's what we're, we're that's what we're, we're moving to. So I'm hoping that it's a lot more uh, it's just a, uh, a lot more streamlined than this because this program is it's just it's okay. it's really it's just so time consuming. Yeah, I can imagine. Very antiquated. Yeah. And I'm really it's looking smart. forward to uh, getting away from it because we're kind of linked to a database on our server right. in the it's office. So. I can right. work and remotely, but I, you know I can just like log me in to work from home. Yeah. And, but it's it, that's just it's just a pain in the you know it's just a real yeah because you're still having to print off the sheets and physically right. give the, the right. sheets so to all the guys. It's like really tied to the office. So this new program will hopefully get yeah. me on the road a lot. Yeah, yeah. Which is where I really should be anyways. The last few months I've been stuck well, yes, really yeah, working yeah, in the office yeah. uh, more than I'd like to. So. Yeah. Stick it in here. I close out the jobs and make sure the money's right, and then take it to the bank. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully, it's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> what we have here is these are our systems for our window tax and our supervisor. So, minus that one, it starts here with residential window cleaning, and through these, we have this. We just go over everything that we do. For example, the very first thing, minimizing trips to the truck. Now, you could say that it could be a little overkill with saying, all right, minimizing trips to the truck. But let's face it, if a tech can make one or two trips to the truck during the course of a job, or he's making six trips to the truck, what is saving us more time? So we wrote an actual system on what you should bring and how it should be done and how you approach a house and why you should minimize the trips. We have it broken down into breaks, weather conditions. These are all the elementary things. Then it goes into house washing, gutter cleaning, flat surface cleaning, roof cleaning, storefront glass cleaning. And then the book continues over here with window cleaning setups, window cleaning techs, what are responsible out of them power washing techs, gutter zap, gutter supervisors, gutter technicians. So we have all the bases covered here and all these systems, this is the two systems that are given to the techs that they have to know and they were all written by Chris and then they were all rewritten by myself and Dave over this winter. And then we also use what they call Dropbox and what we have stored in Dropbox is probably double or if not triple of what's in this. So um, you're going to be sharing that Dropbox with my company in the UK? No. Oh. It's all proprietary information. I have no problem sharing it with you, but due to the fact that you're so involved with cock rings, I, I figured I would, I would need money out of it. We need money. Eh? Sorry, I need money. Um, so that's, that's what our techs and our, all our techs and our supervisors work off of. And then I have one broken down. Then I have one broken down into office staff responsibilities, daily paperwork, our safety meetings, our MSDS sheets. We have weekly meetings here 
uh, with the key players here, Dave, Ron, Crystal, and we just go over everything. And this is basically... Is it safe to say that these systems were in place when Chris had the business? Correct, absolutely. So these guys here are used to adhering to such systems, right? Correct. They weren't... So it was easy to implicate, implement refined state uh, systems. Yes, but they weren't expecting they weren't expecting to have to rewrite them all over the winter. And what I did is when we first took over, I totally took every single thing we had here, looked at it, and then broke it down. Crystal, go over this. This is what I think. She rewrote her parts. Dave and I did our parts with those two manuals. And to this day, I'm still getting um, drop boxes in here these are our drop boxes, so if you can see ACWC systems, and then under systems again, now we have all this, I mean, there's everything here. It's, it's covered from soup to nuts, including everything that's up on that shelf that I haven't even touched on yet. We do all the analyticals on every sale we make. The end of every month, Crystal gives me, generates me reports on all our marketing campaigns, how much money we make from each marketing campaign, for example, um, the first card we ran this year, which was our spring special card. So right now, when at the end of April, she will send me a report, which she already sent me for March, on how much money we made on this card, broken down by repeat customers, new customers, uh, ASV customers. Andrew. All right. Thank you. Hello. The last job I had was delivering milk. With the squeegee? You know, with the squeegee. <laughs> it's not hard. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science, right? Any idiot could do it, right? <laughs> the, the most important question in the world, you, you fucking missed it, dude. You, you blew your chance. Who in this world does Pete Artusa admire the most and look up to? Him?